today from my backyard. So let's look at the setup. We've got a right triangle A, B, C. The height of that right triangle is one, so one unit. Then the base of that right triangle is gonna be a variable R. Then furthermore, we put inside of that right triangle a sector of a circle. So that circle is centered at C and then it has a radius given by R, which is this line segment length AC. So notice that's gonna sweep from this point A to a point along the hypotenuse of the triangle. Next, we inscribe a square above the sector of the circle so that the side of the square is contained in line segment AB. That side has side length S, which will depend on R. So notice if we let R tend to zero, this side length is gonna definitely tend towards zero. And also, as R tends to infinity, S tends towards zero. But that tells us that there's probably some value of R that will make S as large as possible. And that's our goal here, is to find the maximum value of S. And like I just pointed out, S here will depend on R. Okay, so there's a bunch of ways to do this. The way that I want to is via coordinate geometry. So that means I need to put this in the Cartesian coordinate plane and that's exactly what I'll do. So I'll take this point A here and put it at the origin. So there I've got zero, zero. And then that makes this point C here at R comma zero because it's along the X axis. So we're extending the X axis out along AC and then we'll extend the Y axis along AB. So that makes this point right here zero comma one. Now the hypotenuse and this circle play an important role for this problem. So we're gonna need equations for each of those. So let's first do the equation of the hypotenuse. And I wanna notice that we can easily find that using the point slope form of the line and the fact that it goes through zero one and R zero. Keeping that in mind, we see that the slope will be minus one over r, and then we've got a y-intercept of one, so that tells us this has the equation y equals minus one over r times x plus one. So next up, we'd like to find the equation of this circle. And I wanna point out that the two pieces of information we need for that are the center, which is r comma zero, and the radius, which is r. So that tells us we've got an equation which is described by x minus r quantity squared plus y squared equals r squared. We can easily solve that for y if we wanted to, so let's do that and we'll get y equals the square root of r squared minus x minus r quantity squared, like that. You might say, well, I need a plus and a minus for that square root, but here we're just looking at the portion of the circle which is above the y-axis. So I only need the positive portion of that square root. Next up, we can easily multiply out what's inside of that radical and cancel some things. And we'll see that the r squareds will cancel and we're left with 2xr minus x squared. That's from foiling out this right here. Notice we'll get x squared minus 2xr plus r squared. And then the distributing the minus sign across and canceling some things will leave us with this right here. So in the end, we've got this nice equation of the circle, y equals square root of 2xr minus x squared. Next up, we'll find the coordinates of the vertices of this square. And I'll do that by transposing the square over here so it's a little bit easier to talk about. So there, I've moved my square over here. So let's pick our easiest coordinates first. So notice the x coordinate of this vertex will be s. So I can just put here that I've got s for the x coordinate. And then that means that the x coordinate for this vertex is also s. So I can put s here as well. Furthermore, I know the x coordinate for these two vertices is zero. So I can just start off by putting zero comma and zero comma for these. Now we need to figure out the y coordinates. So notice the y coordinate here 
is also shared with the circle. So that means we can grab this y coordinate by plugging the x coordinate into the equation of the circle. So that means we're going to replace x with s in this equation. That will give us the square root of 2rs minus s squared, like that. So now we've got both coordinates for that vertex. And then furthermore, we know that these share a y coordinate. That means the y coordinate of this is also 2rs minus s squared. Now let's talk about the y coordinates for the other two vertices. So the y coordinate for this vertex is also shared with the line. So that means we need to plug the x coordinate into the equation of the line. But that's not too bad. Notice that's going to give us 1 minus s over r. Again, we just replaced x with s there. Then we'll get the same thing over here. This will be 1 minus s over r. Finally, we want to ensure that this is a square. We'll notice that this side length right here is obviously s already. This side length right here is also s already. So now we can just set an equation which will make this side length s as well, and thus this side length over here on the left also s. So I can measure it one way just by saying that that side length has to be s. Then I can measure it another way by looking at the difference between this y coordinate and this y coordinate. So we've got 1 minus s over r minus the square root of 2rs minus s squared. 2rs minus s squared. Now we've got a nice equation that relates r and s. We'd like to solve that for s, given that for our setup, we want s to depend on r. So let's maybe get at that. First thing that I'd like to do is maybe multiply everything by r. That'll give us r times s equals r minus s minus r times the square root of 2rs minus s squared. Then I can move everything without a square root to one side of the equation and leave the square root on the other side of the equation, thus allowing us to cancel the square root by squaring. So that will give us, let's see, we can write this as s plus rs minus r. So that's from moving this s over and this r over equals minus r times the square root of 2rs minus s squared. The next we can square both sides of this equation. Let's see what that gives us. So this will give us s squared plus r squared plus r squared. And then the cross terms, each will have a coefficient of 2. So that'll be 2rs squared minus 2rs minus 2r squared s. Great, so like I said, that's from foiling out this left-hand side. Then the right-hand side is quite a bit simpler. That's gonna give us r squared times 2rs minus s squared, like that. Now we can view this as a quadratic equation in s. So that means we'll have coefficients of s squared s and constant terms which all depend on r. So let's see what that'll give us. So our s squared term will be given by, so let's see, we've got a coefficient of r squared here and r squared here. Moving that over will give us a coefficient of 2r squared. We've got a coefficient of 2r here. Then finally, a coefficient of 1 here. So that's everything that has a coefficient of s squared. So let's see what we get for the coefficient of s now. Now, if we notice, all the coefficients of s will be negative. So we can pull a minus sign out of there. And then notice that we'll have a minus 2r cubed. So I'll put a 2r cubed here. The minus sign is already taken out a 2r squared, so 2r squared, and then finally a 2r, so I've got plus 2r there. Okay, now let's look at the constant terms. There's only a single constant term and it's r squared, so I can put r squared here equals zero. So that gives us a quadratic equation where we think about r as being a constant and s as being a variable. So I'll let you guys check this, but via the quadratic formula, we can get that s is equal to r over 2r squared plus 2r plus 1. And so that's the relationship between s and r. 
Okay, so let's maybe bring that to the top and then we'll finish it off. We just finished up finding out the relationship between S and R. Now we want to find the value of R, which will cause S to be a maximum, and then in turn find that maximum value of S. And we're going to do that with uh, first semester calculus. So we know that maximums and minimums occur at critical points. That's where the derivative is equal to zero. That means we need the derivative of S in terms of R. So let's maybe calculate that. So we've got dS dR will be equal to, well, we need to use the quotient rule here. So the derivative of the top, which is one, times the bottom, which is two R squared plus two R plus one, minus, the derivative of the bottom times the top. So I'll write that as r times 4r plus 2. And then that's all over the denominator squared, which is 2r squared plus 2r plus 1. So like I said, we need to set that equal to 0, find the value at r of r that achieves that. So I first up want to notice that this denominator is never equal to 0. And you can check that just by showing that that quadratic polynomial doesn't have any real roots. So that means we only really need to worry about when the numerator is equal to zero. But notice some things cancel in the numerator. We've got a 2r minus 2r here. That's going to cancel. And then we've got this 2r squared minus 4r squared. So that's going to give us this equation, 1 minus 2r squared equals zero, which tells us that r must be plus or minus the square root of a half but we can just take that positive square root. So we've got an r value of 1 half. So that's the value of r, which will cause s to be a maximum. Technically, we would maybe need to do the second derivative test here, but we'll skip that. So now that tells us that the maximum value of s will be achieved when r is 1 over root 2. So let's plug 1 over root 2 up here and see what we get. So that'll give us 1 over root 2 in the numerator. And then we'll have 2 times 1 over root 2 squared, but that'll cancel down to 1. And then we'll have plus 2 over root 2. But notice that's root 2 squared over root 2, which will give us root 2. And then plus another 1 from this. Next, maybe we'd like to simplify this a little bit. Let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 2. That'll give us a 1 in the numerator and then a 2 plus the square root of 2 in the denominator. Now, I think you could finish this off by rationalizing this, but in my mind, that's a simple enough expression. So what did we achieve? We achieved that the maximum size of this square is 1 with side length 1 over 2 plus the square root of 2, and that's achieved when this side length down here is 1 over root 2. And that's a good place to stop.